evening. For several hours, there have been no official reports of new action in the South Atlantic. But it is not likely that Sunday will be a day of rest. The British say they have close to 5,000 men firmly established in a 10-square-mile beachhead and are moving out to secure more territory. Argentina gives a completely different version and suggests the British are, in fact, hanging on for dear life. And as always in war, the price is life. Both Britain and Argentina have suffered heavy losses, a fact neither country is particularly anxious to stress, as both speak of courage, valor, and glory. We'll hear it all tonight, and we begin in London with John Mackenzie. The Union Jack is flying again on at least part of the Falkland Islands. Getting it there to Port San Carlos, however, required a daring commando landing. In the early hours of yesterday, wave after wave of British Marines stormed ashore. The resistance here, they say, was light, and they were able to take 14 prisoners. By dawn, most of the 5,000 troops were busy unloading tanks and setting up a 10-mile bridgehead. One reporter traveling with the commandos reports on how they've been received. Some 50 locals, including up to a dozen children, were busy ferrying ammunition to gunners using their tractors and trailers, dishing out soup and tea to the troops and providing much-needed shelter. This morning, while paratroopers dig in around the settlement, my section of commandos has been sent out to track down the Argentinians. Without proper clothing and equipment which they left behind, it's thought they cannot last long in such appalling conditions. We are back on the Falkland Islands and back in strength. We intend to ensure that aggression does not pay. Welcome to ERA Military Collectibles. So in today's video what we're doing is we're doing an anniversary video for the Falklands. It is the 2nd of April uh, which would have seen the Falklands War start this day 40 years ago. Um, so what we're doing in today's video is we're literally just going to run through, I'm not going to go too much into the history of the Falklands War, that will be in the video description. But what we're actually going to talk about is we're going to talk about somebody who's getting into the hobby of collecting or reenacting and they want to put together a basic impression or a living historian a living hist historian's impression of um, the Battle of the Falklands. So, starting on the mannequin, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to get yourself 68 pattern jacket, pants, um, uh, a, woolly, uh, a woolly pulley and a KF shirt or a Harry Mary shirt. Um, for your basic loadout. So that's the basic uniform. Then you will need a 58 pattern. Now you don't have to be over extensive on the webbing. Like this is basically the bare minimum. There's no actual uh, poncho roll. We have one water bottle pouch. So this is just your basic webbing set um, to portray a member of the armed forces in the Falklands uh, in 1982. Now, next thing you will need is you will need to decide what regiment you're going to do. You will get away with this for the Royal Marine Commandos and every other regiment except for the Paras. The Paras had a smock, they had a parachute smock, which is slightly different, but there are other ways around it. They were issued windproofs, so if you had a set of windproofs you could still portray a paratrooper uh, with the, with the um, windproofs rather than the 68 smock. But the 68 pattern smock, as I said, will do for all the other combatants of the British Armed Forces that were in the Falklands at that time. Next thing you need to do is decide on headdress. So, for regular infantry guys or regular army lads, you will be wearing the um, Mark IV uh, helmet. I was just making sure that I had it the right way around. Um, the Mark IV helmet. Uh, uh, this was worn by the Welsh Guards, the Coldstream Guards, the Scots, or sorry, not the Coldstream Guards, the Welsh Guards, the Scots Guards, um, the Gurkhas, those type of regiments that would have worn this uh, helmet in um, theatre, they would have had a, a Hessian sack over it and, and scrimmed up. You do see them for sale with scrim on them. Um, if you're going Royal Marine Commandos direction, you will need this. Uh, you, you do see them wearing it occasionally, but normally you see them wearing their berets. Um, this is the Armour Corps helmet that the uh, Royal Marine sort of adopted. Um, the Navy would wear something similar to this as well, as well as the Mark IVs. Um, and then if you're going for the Paras, you need to get the parachute helmet. Uh, now this has got the uh, nylon 
chin strap you do see these being used um, but you also see the earlier types which was like a leathery plasticky chin strap um, so the, as I said this will do you for the parrots if you're going the helmet route and you can also go the beret route now I don't recommend people to wear berets to a certain degree but at living history events and stuff like that it is sort of acceptable because people do get upset or do get offended when they see their berets being worn so you, as I said you can have the parachute regiment um, but you need to get the smock or you need to adopt your loadout or you can have the commando beret um, depending on, on which regiment as I said that you want to do uh, little little pieces of advice I can give somebody if they are getting into the reenacting side of the Falklands conflict or any type of conflict is pick a regiment uh, do as much research as you possibly can on that regiment and then get your kit and your loadout together for that um, regiment but as I said this is your basic 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 starter kit if you want to do an impression for the Falklands which is a 68 pattern jacket 58 pattern pants uh, 68 pattern pants and DMS boots. Um, no, you can get away with their wearing private purchase hiking boots of the time frame of that thing because it was worn as well. And you can get into more detail like backpacks and things like that as well. But as I said, this is your basic bog standard impression, starter impression for a member of the, of the armed forces in the Falklands. So if you liked what we provide here at Air Military Collectibles, please like, please subscribe, please tune in for the next video. If you want to get in contact with the channel, as always, the email will be at the top of the video description. Thank you.